call and intercept our evil hook in between. Uh, I wouldn't agree on using the word evil, I would say alternative, but we'll just have to go along with his slides. In order to do this, we have to introduce our own code into kernel space. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do is allocate memory in the kernel. This is somewhat uh, of a tricky part in most operating systems, especially if we are doing this in, in Linux, for instance. It's very, very tricky to, to, to allocate kernel space. Then we want to introduce our alternative code into the kernel and replace the system call that is called by the, the user function uh, with our own code so that we can intercept that call, change the output or input in, if that's the case, and return the, the result to the user. Profit. If we want to do this in, uh, in the Linux operating system, that doesn't have the mock kernel API that we're going to look into, late, uh, into later. We're gonna do this in a, in a somewhat cumbersome way. Uh, the first thing we have to do is try to allocate some, some kernel space. In Linux, when we need to read and write to kernel memory, we use the pseudo device, okay, perhaps I should move back a bit. Uh, we use the pseudo device slash dev kmem. This, this pseudo, pseudo device allows us to read and write directly to kernel memory. In recent versions, they might have limited this, this capability, but in concept, it's the same thing. It allows us to read and write to kernel memory, but we are unable to, to allocate memory. So how are we going to allocate memory? What we do is that we find a syscall that is not very often used, such as set host name, for instance, in this example. This is a, a syscall that, is, that will be very seldomly used. And the, we choose one that is not used often to avoid race conditions. Then we remap that syscall into the kmalloc function, which is used to allocate kernel memory. And then we invoke that function. When we invoke that function, what is going to happen is that <coughs> instead of calling set hostname, the kernel is going to invoke uh, kmalloc and allocate some memory for us. Once we get the pointer back to that memory, we can restore the or original function and uh, restore the system to the previous state, knowing that we now have a piece of kernel memory that has been properly allocated and can be used. There are alternative methods to, to doing this uh, in that we can find certain parts of the kernel space that we know is unused or that we know is very unlikely to be used for something else and that we can use to introduce our own code. But the popular way of doing this is to, to hook an, un, an unpopular uh, function in kernel space. Now, in Mac OS X, on the other hand, we have a few other tools at our hands. <clears throat> Instead of reading and writing to slash dev kmem, we have mock IPI kernel functions that, that, that we can use. Uh, VM read, fairly simple, read, read and write, uh, reading to uh, virtual memory. VM write, write to virtual memory, and VM allocate. Now, this is the thing that makes this special. It's a very, very useful function. So the first thing we have to talk about when we talk about VM uh, read, write, and allocate is that we need uh, a port into the kernel. Uh, the, Mac o, the Mac OS X mock kernel uses something called tasks, threads, and ports. Uh, a task is basically a virtual representation of an execution environment. Uh, a task can contain threads. So in many cases, it's a process, like you start Netscape or Bash or something. That would be a task. Uh, it has its own adder space, just as any other, uh, uh, as normal processes does, uh, but it can contain threads. Uh, each thread is, in, as in other, uh, any other operating system, uh, has its own execution uh, identity, and it has its own scheduling. Uh, for, for each of these, we have something called a port. Uh, and this is not my main area of expertise, so uh, I'll, I'm gonna have a bit of a trouble explaining in, in detail how this actually works. But 
we use the ports to communicate between different parts of the operating system. And the interesting thing here for us is that we have a port so that we can communicate with a kernel. These ports are used in inter-process communication between different parts of the operating system and also between different, part, uh, different processes. But in order to communicate with the kernel, we need to access its port. And the kernel always has uh, zero as its port. Uh, in this very small example, how many of you can actually read this? Well, a few of you in the front rows at least. Uh, the interesting part here, I wish I had a, does someone have a laser pointer or something I can borrow? Well, I'm just gonna stand here and jump. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's do it like this. Okay, so task for PID, Mac task self, and here, zero. This is uh, so that we can get uh, a read and write pointer to the port in the kernel. Uh, so it's fairly simple. Ask for task for PID for zero, and then we do VM read on that port. That's as easy as it is. Of course, this requires root access, as I'm sure all of you understand by now. But once we gain root access, we can use these commands to read and write to kernel memory. This has some very interesting implications. If we can read and write um, to kernel memory, we can change basically everything. Mac OS X, for instance, has something called security levels, which is basically a mirror of, of the BSD concept of security levels, whether or not you are allowed to, for instance, load kernel modules. So, if you want to, you can disable the possibility of loading kernel modules in order to protect yourself from uh, kernel modules based uh, rootkits. But since we can read and write to kernel memory, we can flip that bit for the, security, uh, for the security level so that we can reintroduce the possibility of loading kernel modules. Very, very good to know. Writing to kernel memory is basically the same thing. We use task for PID on zero get the port, and then we use VM write on that port. Fairly simple. And of course, the really interesting one for us is VM allocate. This allows us to allocate memory inside a different process. And in this case, we wanna allocate memory in the process used for the kernel. This allows us to, to to use a very, very easy way to introduce new code into the kernel. So, what is it that we really wanna change in the kernel? Well, in this example, which I believe is the, ah, okay, it wasn't an example, it was just destruct. Uh, sorry. Uh, the thing we wanna change in the kernel is the sys entry. So I think I'm gonna, there was a really nice slide this, explaining this one, yeah. So I'm gonna start with this slide. <clears throat> Whenever a user process invokes a function in the kernel, we use something called the sysentry table. So if we, for instance, want to hide a process or if we wanna hide a file, let's take the file example because it's very easy. If we wanna hide a file, we have a, we have a backdoor that is an executable and perhaps we have a sniffer that generates a log and we wanna hide this artifacts of our intrusion. We wanna hide these files. Uh, we, we want to modify 